what do I say? What do I put in there? Like what, what should I say in the letter? Hi, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Samantha Perlman and I'm a local realtor. If you've been following along, I've been putting out a series of videos geared to all you home buyers out there because the market is insane right now. If you are a buyer out there in today's market, I know you know what I'm talking about. It is a struggle to stand out and it is a struggle to win the deal. There are bidding wars happening on almost every single house out there. In fact, if you follow along with my weekly uh, market updates, we actually have more properties accepting offers and going under contract than we have coming on the market. So it is tough out there to be a buyer. I feel for you. I feel for all of my buyer clients right now. So in last week's video, I gave some tips and ideas and strategies in different ways that you can structure the terms of your offer to make it stand out. And one of the things I had talked about was writing a personal letter to the seller. In this week's video, I'm actually going to break down the generic format that I typically give to my buyers and how I recommend they write this letter to the seller. Now, writing a personal letter, some agents are all about it, some are against it, and it really depends on what side of the coin you fall on. A lot of the seller's agents, they don't really love it because they don't want any emotional ties to making the decision. They wanna be able to get their seller the most amount of money, and they also don't want to put their sellers at risk for any sort of discrimination, lawsuits, or anything like that. So a lot of listing agents really don't love the personal letter. However, when I represent the buyer, I always recommend they do it because really for you as a buyer, there's very little risk and it's free to do so. It only takes a few minutes to type it up. You know, and I also explained to my buyers that not every seller is gonna read the personal letter and not every seller is gonna have any sort of emotional reaction to the sale of the property. So for example, if this is an investor property, you know, somebody, is, this is a business for them, they bought the property, they fixed it up, they're reselling it, they've got no emotional ties to the house. So your letter may actually have no effect on them. The, the personal letters really work well in the properties that are being sold um, that were family homes or been in the family for a really long time or where the seller really has an emotional tie to the property. That's when a seller letter can really help you as a buyer. So there's really two situations when I recommend to my buyer that they write a letter. The first and foremost is what we've been talking about for weeks, which is when you're going up against multiple offers. The seller letter, again, could really pull on the emotional strings of that seller and it could really make your offer stand out amongst everybody else's. So if you're going up against multiple offers, definitely write a seller letter. So the second situation when I typically recommend, you know, that a, a buyer writes a personal letter to the seller is if, let's say it's not a crazy market, you're not going up against multiple offers, you're the only offer on the table, and you're going in pretty low against their list price. A lot of times submitting an, a personal letter to the seller explaining why you love the house and why they should consider your offer could help soften the blow of the lowball offer. And that has worked well for some of my buyers in the past. So the reason I'm making this video is because I get a lot of buyers that have a little bit of writer's block, either they're first time home buyers or they've never written one of these letters before. And they're like, what do I say? What do I put in there? Like, what, what should I say in the letter? So I typically give them a generic format to follow and then they fill in all the information. So that's what I'm gonna be going through today. So let's break down what the format of the letter should be. So number one, you wanna start by addressing the seller directly. Talk to your agent about pulling the tax record to get the actual name of the seller and you wanna address the letter to them. Dear Mr. and Mrs. Smith, as an example. Number two, you wanna start by thanking them. Thanking them for allowing you to see the home, thanking them for making it convenient for you to see the home, anything like that, accommodating your tough schedule, whatever it is pertains to you, but really thank them for allowing you to view it and allowing you to make an offer on the property. Next, you wanna break the barrier a little bit by offering them a compliment on the property. If you know that they just renovated the kitchen and you love the kitchen, compliment them on their wonderful cabinet selection or paint colors or flooring selections. Or if you notice that the home is really, really well maintained and super clean, compliment them on that. Because let's face it, people love compliments. If you compliment them on something, you're already breaking down a little bit of the barrier and you're also showing them that you appreciate the decisions they've made in regards to the house so far. It's gonna give them that feel good feeling. Next, you wanna explain why this home is the right home for you and for your family. Maybe it's in the perfect location for commuting. Maybe it has the right amount of bedrooms for your family. Maybe it's got that open concept kitchen because you entertain and you host every single holiday there. Whatever it is about this home that makes it the perfect home for you as a buyer, this is when you wanna talk about that. Next, if you can build rapport by finding some sort of common ground with the seller, I also recommend that you do that in the body of the letter. So for example, if you were touring the home and you know 
noticed that they had sports memorabilia up for their favorite sports team, let's say Giants or Jets or something like that, and you happen to be a fan of the same sports team, then I would casually mention that you're building that rapport, you're building that commonality, and it's gonna make them feel like they already know you. And then last, you wanna end the letter by thanking them again for letting you see the home, for submitting the offer, and asking them really to strongly consider your offer above any others. And then close it out by saying that you're looking forward to hearing back, hopefully with good news. So this is a generic format. You certainly don't have to follow this exactly, but I find that this sort of layout works really well um, for my buyers and has worked well for them in the past. Um, you can also include some family photos if you'd like to do that as well. It's really up to you. The other thing I recommend to them is that once you write one letter, if you don't win that house and you have to write a letter on the other one, a lot of times you can use the same letter and just change out the different things that are pertained to that house specifically. Now I get asked the question, well, will the seller letter work? And really I, I can't answer that. I don't know. I don't know the seller personally, um, but it does really depend on the seller. So then the question is, you know, is it worth it? And I'm always gonna say yes. I always say it's free, it only takes a little bit of your time, and including it with the offer could be the one thing that makes your offer stand out, so really it can't hurt from you as a buyer. If you're a buyer out there and you used a seller letter and you were successful with it and it got you the house, I would love to know, so share your story in the comment section below. As always, thank you so much for watching. I really hope you found this information helpful. Best of luck to all the home buyers out there, and I'll see you next week.